Um, but yeah, I, I love the idea. I even have a, I have a scorecard, and when we talked about it, you you have a similar scorecard. So we will. We will I thought the good thing. I thought the good on. thing. I thought the good thing that you said when we talked about it was, obviously, I'm taking them on the course. I'm collating this data, and I'm very privileged. I'm at a quiet course where I can do that. Not everyone can do that. So exactly. I think. If you want to get, if you can't get on a golf course and you want to get closer to what I'm doing, what you're saying about hitting a putt, going and then hitting a chip or hitting a driver and then coming back and hitting a putt, that's a great way to represent that. And that, yeah. uh, that, yeah. that creates, um, that creates the, the, the context uh, that, that we need. Um, but Absolutely. like you say, not, not everyone, or like I just said, not everyone can do that. So if you can't do that, the question is how close can you get exactly. to, to doing that? And, and that's where yeah. you've, done a, you've done a great job of that if you can't get out onto the golf course. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and like I said before, I still think uh, there's value in everything, right? I still were... Um, Maybe we haven't mentioned this, but we're trying to make a couple of episodes, right? Rather than having a, a full hour that people have to listen to, we're going to make a couple of episodes. And, and this is obviously is episode one, talking about assessments. Um, I think there's still value in a, in a static control environment, uh, 10 times the same shot or block practice or whatever you want to call it. Um, I still think there's value in that as well. The, the reason why I switch basically straight to capital when I first saw it and I fell in love with it right away is that capital allows me to do the other stuff as well. And, uh, and that, that for me is the most important part. I mean, whatever kind of coach you are, if you are hundred percent performance coach, like you are, I'm more of an all round coach. So I do a lot of on technical stuff. I do a lot on green reading on strategy, uh, going out on the course, making decisions. Um, so capital allows me to do all of it. Yeah, yeah and I, I think as well, um, one of the great things about Capto is if you have students that you trust, <laughs> students yeah. that are willing to put a deposit down. Um, yeah. I've not necessarily been in a lesson. Once I've done that initial on-course assessment, exactly. or once I've done that initial test, like you said, where... I'll set them up a putting green challenge, but they'll have to do other challenges between each putt. Once I've done that and they understand and they can use the device, I will give them the cap toe to go Absolutely. play nine holes on their own. And then yep. they're going to bring me back contextualized data. Um, and awesome. I agree that there is a time and a place for, <clears throat> excuse me, for capturing in isolation, you yep. know, um, Phil Kenyon does it. Uh, Preston Combs does it. Uh, yeah. David Orr does it. Yeah. If they're all doing it, there's got to be something valid about it, right? Absolutely. And there is, yeah. There, 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 there absolutely is. But like you said, I'm, I'm at the end of this spectrum. So actually as well, when I'm working with Capto, I'm getting the data from the player and I would send it to someone like Preston or someone like yourself. Yeah. Because I'm, exactly. not, I'm not analyzing it. It's not my role. It's not my area of expertise. All exactly. I want as a performance coach is the purest data I can possibly get yep. for performance. I'm not necessarily involved in the learning of the putting stroke. Yep. And that's, exactly. where you, that's where you are. That's the big difference. Absolutely. So yeah, Capto gives you the ability to, be, to wear both hats, right? The training exactly. to learn and the training to perform. perform exactly. um, yeah. And, and, and yeah, that's why. And it is, like I said, it's to be able to capture that data and it, for it to be so simple to use that my students can, can get out there and use it. It's, uh, yeah, it's a powerful tool. Yeah. And one thing that I, for example, what you were talking about uh, when using it on the, out on the course, um, uh, and maybe th this is a good uh, moment to, to pop up that image of the scorecard that I use. And, and when we talked about it, you use something similar. And uh, we, can, we can edit that, that image in. Um, 
I, I actually have on the scorecard, I even have a, a, a column saying if, if the player feel that it was a technically sound putt or that they felt that it was a misread or that they felt that it was a mental failure or, or that they felt mentally strong or they didn't feel mentally strong. So you actually get back up like, okay, how, did that feel like a technical uh, a green reading mistake or was that a, a mental issue that we were talking about? Um, and as you know, as a performance coach, sometimes your bad shots go in and sometimes your good shots are missed, right? Um, but then it's still interesting information to see where did it go wrong and what happened on that particular putt. So, uh, yeah, I love, I love the way you mentioned that and um, you mentioned that as well in your GLT book, uh, Golf Training. Uh, I'm not sure, is that the correct title? Golf, GLT Golf, golf Training? Golf, yeah, Golf Practice, How to Practice yeah. Golf and Take Your Range Game to the course. There, there was one yeah. more thing I want to add, actually. I, I do mention that in the book. And what, what I actually do is when I'm out with a player, I record all that stuff myself. Yeah. So the player will hit the pot and I'll be like, hey, what do you think of the process? How was your tension? How was your breathing? How was the read? How was the strike? What would you change? I'll ask a ton of questions. And then I'll yeah. also measure... Did they miss low? Did they miss high? But I'm doing it all. And after speaking to you, I think having this scorecard and empowering the player to do it is a better learning experience. So that's, that's why I like it because I think the player should take ownership of what he's doing and, and really trigger him to evaluate yeah. on, on all levels. And of course they, I mean, the, the danger of data is that you overload your player with data, right? So, and, and you, you write a real interesting part in your, uh, in your book about feedback, that it's actually more effective to not give feedback after every shot. It's more effective to hit a couple of yeah. shots than work on the feedback of, of a cluster of, uh, of putts. Um, and, and that's why I think that that is so beautiful because they just go out and play that nine hole with a wedge in between nine hole uh, program or you play nine holes out in the course and afterwards you you take a little bit of evaluation time to walk through and give them feedback on what they've done and then they go they take that into their next next training session yeah i agree I, it, it's really good and i'm going to start getting my students to to do that i did do it with one tour player um <clears throat> who thought he was a poor putter and he recorded like bit very similar to your scorecard. He recorded everything on every putt for a long, long Absolutely. period of time. And he yeah. said, he said, man, I'm a great putter. Yeah. <laughs> All I do is when it's, when it's downhill left to right, I underread it and I hit it too hard. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And, and that was leading to three putts from 10, probably 12 feet. Birdie. Yeah. Probably from birdie opportunities. Yeah. Easy. Yep. Turning a birdie into a bogey. Yeah. And you can't do that on the European tour. So, <laughs> but that all came from journaling. Yeah. That all came from journaling. Now, it would have been amazing. We didn't have a cap toe at that time. It would have been yeah, amazing if we were capturing yeah. data in line yeah. with that journal. Yeah. So let's, um, we're probably going to do a session on green reading. So we'll get, so we'll get more to that. But I think yeah. uh, talking about assessments, I think this was a uh, real, real cool because we, is there's no just one way of doing it. There, there's different ways. Um, there's absolute value in static measurement. There is uh, value in, in random measurement. There's value in performance measurement. Um, and if you can do all three, fantastic. If you are more of an all-rounder coach, if you're more specialized like you in performance coach, you, you take to that, that side of the game. Um, but hey, the, the, the possibility of one little machine to do it all, that, that is something that I find really cool. Yeah, I agree. I agree. 